we discussed first order circuits that could be solved by using first order differential equations. This week we will discuss second order circuits. The objectives of today's lecture are to define second order circuits, state the standard form for second order equation, and derive the governing differential equation for second order circuits. A second order circuit is an electrical circuit that can be described by second order differential equation. Second order circuits typically contain resistors and two energy storage elements such as inductors or capacitors. Some of the common definitions used for those are RLC circuits or RC squared or RL squared circuits. There are three key characteristics of a second order circuit. The first one, just like first order, is there's a static gain which represents the ratio between the output and the input of the system after it reaches steady state for a step or constant input. The second characteristic is the natural frequency omega sub n, which indicates the oscillation frequency of the system when there is no damping. The third characteristic is the damping ratio, zeta, which indicates how much damping is in the system if there is damping at all. This value is zero, which indicates no damping when there are no resistors in the system. So that would represent a system that would oscillate forever, for example, if there was a frequency input. So you would see the energy being exchanged back and forth between the inductor and capacitor for all time. The standard form for the governing differential equation is the second derivative of y plus 2 zeta omega sub n, the first derivative of y, plus omega sub n squared y of t, which equals k omega sub n squared x of t, where just as before, x of t is the input and y of t is the output. Note that there are other standard forms for this second order differential equation, but this is the one that we will use and we will call it our governing differential equation. The second order circuit also exhibits a natural and a step response based upon the stored energy and the application or removal of an excitation source. The second order circuit also exhibits a transient and a steady state response. There are four types of responses based upon the transient and steady state responses. They are overdamped, underdamped, undamped, and critically damped. Okay, let's try an example. Derive the governing differential equation for the following circuit. Express the answer in standard form and determine the static gain, natural frequency, and damping ratio. So since we have a series RLC circuit here, which is essentially a loop, we're going to use KVL to solve. Recall that KVL is Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the sum of the voltages around a loop is equal to zero. So if we make rises negative and drops positive, then we would have the voltage across R plus the voltage across L plus the voltage across C equals X of T, the input. Now recall that the input is X of T and our output Y of T is the voltage across the capacitor. So if we replace that in our equation, we have VR plus VL plus Y of T equals X of T. We can use Ohm's law to rewrite the voltage drop across the resistor as I of T times R and the voltage across the inductor is L di of t dt plus y of t equals x of t. This is a first order differential equation, but it's not in terms of only our inputs and outputs. So if we call this equation one, equation two is going to be a relationship between I of t and our output y of t. I of t is the current through the capacitor, and we know that the current through the capacitor is I C D V D T. So I of t is also equal to C D Y of t D T. So our next step is to put equation two into equation one. And by doing this, we have R C D Y of t D T plus LC, the second derivative of Y with respect to T, plus Y of T equals X of T. And now we're going to do a little bit of rearranging so that we can compare it to our standard governing differential equation. So I'm going to have the second derivative of Y with respect to time, plus R over L times the first derivative of Y, 
plus one over LC, Y of T, is equal to one over LC, X of T. Now let's compare this to our standard governing differential equation, which was the second derivative of Y, plus two zeta omega sub n, the first derivative of y, plus omega n squared y of t, and this equals k omega n squared x of t. So comparing coefficients, we see that two zeta omega sub n is equal to r over l, omega n squared is equal to one over lc, and k omega n squared is equal to one over LC. So, omega N squared is equal to one over LC, so omega N is equal to one over the square root of LC, and that's our natural frequency. And since the, scat the static gain, K omega N squared, is also equal to one over LC, we know that the static gain K is equal to one. And, 2 zeta omega sub n was equal to r over l. And since we know that omega n is 1 over the square root of c, we have that zeta is equal to r over 2 times the square root of c over l. Okay, let's try another example. Here we have a parallel RLC circuit or a single node pair. So since it's mostly parallel, this time we're going to use KCL to solve, or Kirchhoff's current law, which states the sum of the currents into and out of a node is equal to zero. We'll label the bottom node as ground, or our reference node, and the top node is already labeled as V of T. Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of the currents into and out of the node is zero, so we're going to make the current of the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor leave the node. So we will have IR plus IC plus IL equals the current in, which is X of T. Remember, X of T is our input. And in this case, Y of T is our output, which is the current through the inductor. So I'm going to rewrite this by using Ohm's law. So the current through the resistor is V of T over R. The current through the capacitor is C dV of T dT. The current through the inductor is Y of T, and that equals X of T. Now, we do have a first order differential equation, but we have it in terms of V of T, Y of T, and X of T. So we now need to use the second equation and get it only in terms of X of T and Y of T. And we know that the voltage across the, the inductor, V of T, is equal to L di dt, or in this case, L dy of T dt. So our next step is going to be to substitute equation two into equation one. And when we do that, we get that L over R dy of T dt plus LC dy of T dt plus Y of T equals X of T. So now we're going to rearrange this so that we can compare it to our governing differential equation. And we have the second derivative of y plus one over rc dy of t dt plus one over lc y of t equals one over lc x of t. Now recall our governing standard second order differential equation was the second derivative of y with respect to time, plus two zeta omega sub n dy of t dt, plus omega n squared y of t equals k omega n squared x of t. So now comparing coefficients, we see that two zeta omega sub n is one over rc, omega n squared is one over LC, and K omega n squared is one over LC. We're going to solve for the natural frequency first again, and we get that omega n is one over the square root of LC, same as it was before. And since K omega n squared 
is also one over LC. The static gain K is equal to one, the same as it was before. Two zeta omega sub n is equal to one over RC. So zeta is equal to one over two RC times the square root of LC. So zeta simplifies to one over two R times the square root of L over C. So now let's start the final example of lecture 2-1. We're going to derive the governing differential equation for the following ideal operational amplifier circuit. Express the answer in standard form and determine the static gain, natural frequency, and damping ratio. In order to solve this problem, we're going to have to define some new variables. So I'm going to call the meeting point of these three resistors VA. And I'm going to call the output of the op amp VO. So the input is x of t, and the output is y of t. But what we're going to do first is to derive the governing differential equation with respect to x of t and v naught, and then from there, find it for y naught, for y of t. So the first thing we're going to do is do KCL at node VA. KCL at node VA yields the equation VA minus x over r, and I'm going to drop the of t just to simplify the notation, plus VA minus VO over r, plus VA minus zero over r, plus C2 dVA dt, which equals zero. Now remember, we're assuming ideal operational amplifier, so we have two ideal assumptions. One of them is that the voltage at the negative and positive terminals is the same. Since the positive terminal is tied to ground, the voltage at the negative terminal is also zero, which is why we have VA minus zero over R. The other assumption is that there is no current flowing into the op amp, which means that if I do KCL at that ground terminal here, then I would assume no current into the negative terminal. So the second equation, which is KCL at the negative terminal on the op amp is zero minus VA over R or negative VA over R and zero minus VO would be the voltage across C1. So that's going to be negative C1 D V naught DT and that equals zero. So now if I call this equation one and equation two, I'm going to substitute equation two into equation one. And when I do that, I get the second order differential equation, the second derivative of V naught plus three RC one over R squared C1, C2, dv naught dt plus 1 over r squared c1 c2 v naught equals negative 1 over r squared c1 c2 x. When we simplify this equation, we get the second derivative of v naught with respect to t plus three over r c2 dv naught dt plus one over r squared c1 c2 v naught equals negative one over r squared c1 c2 x. And we call this our third equation. So we now have our second order differential equation that is a relationship between the input and V naught. So we just need to find a relationship between V naught and Y of T. Well, as you can see here, Y of T is the voltage across the resistor RB and V naught is the voltage across the series resistors RA and RB. So the relationship between the two of them is that Y is equal to RB over RA plus RB times V naught. 
So if I were to solve this equation for V naught, V naught would be equal to RA plus RB over RB times Y, and this is going to be our fourth equation. So the next step is to substitute equation four into equation three. When we substitute equation four into equation three, we end up with the second derivative of y with respect to time plus three over RC2 dy dt plus one over R squared C1 C2 times y equals negative RB over RA plus RB times R squared C1 C2 times X. So now we're going to write our standard governing differential equation and compare coefficients again. So the second derivative of y with respect to time plus two zeta omega sub n, the first derivative of y with respect to time, plus omega n squared times y equals k omega n squared times x. So if we compare coefficients for omega n squared, omega n is equal to one over r times the square root of C1, C2. K would be equal to negative RB over RA plus RB. And then the final term, two zeta omega sub n is equal to three over R C2. So zeta omega sub n is equal to three halves over RC2. And zeta is equal to three halves times the square root of C1 over C2. And this concludes our discussion of the introduction to second order circuits and second order differential equations. Mm -hmm.